So let's have a look at how we can go about building a model which will allow us to predict people's NPS or recommendation scores uh, based upon operational and transactional data. So here we are, we're looking at the IBM SPSS modeler application. This is very much at the heart of the predictive promoter solution. And it's this application that we use that enables us to find patterns within transactional and operational data that's related to people's recommendation scores and very much enables you know, advanced analysis of NPS related data. And currently I'm connected to a, a database which is uh, connected through this little node here. It, could, it doesn't have to be a database. It could have been a flat file or an Excel file or a range of different file formats. It just happens to be sitting here in a SQL Server database. And if I show you what the data looks like, if I just connect up one of these little uh, these little icons or nodes as they're known, and if I run that procedure to show us a table of values, you can see that it's comprised of our four and a half thousand target records, and each record has a unique guest ID. We know their gender, whether or not they're male or female. We know their booking category, whether or not they directly phoned or came through a third party. Um, whether or not it's one guest staying on their own, whether or not they made use of food service, the bar service, part of a group booking, whether or not included the weekend, are they a returning guest, the number of nights they stayed there, their spend, uh, their room grade, which is very important, which is whether or not they actually got a standard room as they booked or whether or not they got upgraded or whether or not they actually got downgraded, and then the discount or surcharge, so they've got a standard rate, but depending on how busy the hotel is, they may actually add on 10% or 20%, or if it's not so busy, they can, or if, if it's a valued customer, they'll actually take away uh, the standard rate and, and, and discount them, so they can, go, they can discount up to 30%. The net promoter score for each visit is shown at the end, and of course we've got their net promoter score category, whether or not they're a passive or promoter or detractor. You've already seen a little screenshot of this distribution of scores. But it makes sense for me to show you a little bit deeper analysis by going and connecting up what's called the data audit node here. And if I run that, that will provide me with a sort of overview of the data here. And we can see these flag fields that we saw earlier on, whether or not they're one guest in food service. Their booking category, as we can see here, if I click on this and just and let's say they, they open this up a little bit, we've got third party phone, third party web, etc. So this this procedure here simply allows me to get you know, a very good overview of the data. Uh, I can see, for example, the spend distribution here, which is kind of average spend. Some people are spending up to over $1,000 per night. Uh, most people are around about the sort of $250 mark, that type of stuff. And we can also see that the detractor, passive, and promoter category has been used to color the distribution. And that's because that's our key field, our target field. And in fact, if I, uh, if I go to the bottom here, we can see that this is actually the, the proportion of detractors, passives, and promoters, so neutral people scoring uh, not nine or 10, but uh, seven or eight, and people scoring six or less. So we can look at these, these different, these different uh, fields and get a sense of you know, what the minimum maximum is. We can do a lot of work in here with regard to quality control, imputing missing values, dealing with extremes, mis uh, uh, dealing with uh, variables and, and values which are not legitimate, etc., etc. But suffice to say, we've kind of cleaned the data already and, we're, and we can do some analysis at this stage. Um, so having explored the data, uh, let's look at how we might go about actually trying to predict people's uh, net promoter score, the recommendation score, uh, using some of the uh, procedures and techniques within the modeler workbench. Okay, for the, so for the purposes of actually predicting people's uh, recommendation scores based upon operational and transactional data, um, I've added a couple of extra icons onto the stream here. And I'll talk you through what, what we're gonna do. First of all, we've got a lot of different techniques and predictive algorithms that we can bring to bear uh, to help us predict this outcome. And in fact, we can see them listed here under the modeling tab. There's, there's a lot, if we look at all of the different techniques that are available within the model, there's a lot, there's a bewildering array of them, particularly for the uh, uninitiated. And in fact, within this particular problem where we're trying to predict a three category outcome, there's a lot of different techniques that we can bring to bear again. 
So to make it easier for ourselves, we've actually got something called an automated uh, procedure, an auto classifier. And an auto classifier will simply try out a bunch of different techniques and pick the best ones. It'll pick the ones which are, are the best performers based upon the criteria you give it, such as overall accuracy. So basically, I'm going to use the auto classifier to make these different techniques, these different algorithms, have a competition basically, and identify which models are the best or most accurate predictors of people's uh, category in their, uh, in, in their recommendation scores, whether or not they are promoters or passives or detractors, these three category outcome. But to make it fair, I'm actually, I've actually added in another little node here, another little icon. This is called a partition node. And this is, this is a convention uh, and a very common approach within predictive modeling. And one of the things we don't want to happen is we don't want the model to be too specific to, to this data. I mean, we're basing it on four and a half thousand bookings. But of course, of course, uh, across the, uh, the, the, the business uh, itself, there may be millions of bookings, particularly over you know, each quarter or each year. And we need to make sure that uh, any models that we predict aren't too specific just to this, this cohort that we've, based, that we've based our analysis on. So what we do is we add in a partition node. And if we look inside the partition node, what it's doing is it's splitting the data into what it calls a training partition size and a testing partition size. That basically means it randomly selects 50% of the data and it uses that to train or build the model. And then we test how the model actually performs on the remaining 50%. So we hold back 50% of the data and we say, okay, so tell us how well, uh, how accurately you can predict these outcomes uh, given that you haven't seen them. So it gives us an indication of how likely it's it's likely to uh, be accurate when we come to scoring customers or guests where we haven't asked them or they haven't provided us with their net promoter score. So what I gotta do is to make that work is just connect up the auto classifier. You can see that it automatically picks up NPS category as the thing that we want to analyze. And remember, the reason it's doing that is because we've identified further up the stream, we've identified uh, the NPS category as our key field, hence, all of the other variables and all the other fields are colored by these three categories of red for detractor, yellow for passive and green for promoter. We've basically told the system that this is our target field. And if I right click and run that, it will begin the process of trying out lots of different algorithms. And in fact, I've restricted it here just to nine algorithms. So it's going to try out nine different techniques. I've asked it to save the top three and to save them based upon their accuracy or their performance on the test sample. That's the group that, they, that the algorithm doesn't see uh, when, it's, when it's building, when it's training. And it produces this little nugget. And the nugget itself is, is a model. It's a, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a modeler nugget. It's an actual model itself. In this case, it's, it's actually what's called an ensemble model because it's made up of more than one model. It's made up of three models because I've asked it to save the top three performing algorithms. And if I look inside it, I have no idea at this, at this stage, you know, which algorithms or which techniques it's going to choose. And I'm not really that bothered at this stage, but if I click inside it and click on edit, I can see that it's chosen something called a C5 algorithm, which I'll show you in a minute, something called a logistic regression model and something else called a neural network. And I can instantly see just from this little graph how well it's actually performing. So the C5, we can see that, you know, if it was a perfect model, if I double click on that, if that was a perfect model, then obviously its predictions would be completely accurate within the promoter group here. It's very, very good at predicting promoters because we can see that, that here are the predictions and the vast majority of the, the people it predicts to be promoters are indeed promoters because it's all green. The vast majority of the detractors um, it actually accurately predicts to be detractors because most of its predictions are in the red. The place where it, it has it struggles a little bit, this is very common, is round about that, that category um, uh, seven or eight, which is the passives and the neutrals. And there, it's here it's got a little bit more inaccuracy, but still pretty good. And, uh, you know, we could do a pretty good job of using that. So that is when we look at that, just that first model, we're getting a very similar story when we look at the other models we can see how accurately they're predicting in fact it tells us overall that the c5 model is is accurately predicting uh, 76 percent of the time 
This is based on the test sample, which we can see here, the testing data set. 75% of the time, the logistic regression model is doing us a more classical statistics model. And the neural network, which is very much a machine learning model, is, uh, is, is predicting just about, just under 75% of the time accurately. If we wanted to see how well it did on the training data set, normally they do better. If we click on here, the training data set, it's actually 82, 76, 75. That's kind of what we'd expect because you know that's the data that, that, that the model was built on. This is the data that the model was tested on and we usually expect it to do a little bit worse. Now, if we look inside one of these models, the C5 model isn't actually that difficult to understand because C5 is known as a, as a rule induction algorithm. If I double click on it and look inside it, we'll see that it's actually comprised of a series of rules. So here it says, I've got 19 rules for detractors. And if we look at one of these rules, it says, okay, here's rule one for detractor. It says, if they haven't uh, made use of the food service, if they spent more than $318, if the room gate was room is booked, but they either were surcharged up to 30%, 20%, or 10%, then we predict them to be a detractor. So it's really the surcharge that's driving this. Another rule down here, let's pick one randomly, rule number eight. Here it's saying, well, if they spent more than $207, if, it, if they either had a non-standard room, so they didn't get their standard room, or their reservation wasn't found, or the room type was not available, and they got surcharged 30, 20, or 10%, then they're also a detractor. Uh, here are rules for passives. So it's saying, you know, rule number, let's take rule number one up here. It says, well, if it was third party web booking, they spent between $191 and $265. The room was his book, but they got an extra there, more than 10% because the hotel was busy, so they're slightly above the standard rate. And then they're much more likely to be passive. Whereas if they're promoters, as we might expect, there's got four rules for promoters here. And it says, you know, if they made use of the bar service, if the number of nights was four to seven nights or eight or more nights, and they spent less than $390, and the room grade was room is booked and actually got 10% discount, then you know that indicates that they're much more likely to be a promoter. So it's a combination of them getting a fairly cheap uh, uh, deal and, and using the, and using uh, the bar service here, which is driving it. So there's a whole bunch of fields in here which are driving these various, you know, these various uh, uh, rules. And it could be anything. It could be uh, the surcharge. It could be uh, it could be the room grade. It could be the amount of money that they're spending. If we look inside another model here, like logistic regression here. It gives us an equation for each of these. And we can see the equation as it comes out. Now if we look at the overall graph, it tells us how accurately it's using all three models, how accurately it predicts the outcome. Okay. So here we can see this is using all three models, and here it's showing us which variables are most important when we use all three models. What are the most important variables? Spending, discount, charge, room, Gary, booking category, group booking, uh, whether or not it's one guest, one food service, number of nights, etc., etc. So we can actually get it to show us all of the different fields. If we switch off some of these models, we say we just wanted to use the C5 model, we can just switch these off. So at the moment, if I switch them on, they're basically a bit like judges on a voting panel where each time a record is presented to them, they all make a prediction and we, you know, we consolidate their recommendations, their or predictions. We can see there's a big difference in the number of fields that are used. C5 uses 11 fields. Logistic regression only uses three fields and the neural network uses 12 fields. So there's a big difference here. Having identified that, can we actually say how accurate the model is? Well, if I just put one final little uh, node here in the end, and I will just pick the top model, just pick the C5 model. We'll see how accurate that is. So we'll see. We'll get it to measure precisely how accurate it is by using this little analysis node. And here it's showing me the performance on the training data set and on the testing data set. And actually on the testing data set, it was actually doing a little bit better. That's unusual. We would expect that to be fairly a random difference, but you know, it's as we can see, it's built itself against 2,250 records. It's tested itself against 2,286 records. And if we look at its predictions, here are the predictions, and it says uh, the rows show the actuals. This is for the training, this is for the testing. So let's look at the testing. So it's saying that these are the actual detractors, and it's accurately predicted 626 detractors as detractors. 76 of the detractors have been predicted as passives, and 60 have been predicted to be promoters. 
we can see that for the passives, it's accurately predicting just under 300 passives as passives. It's mispredicting them, 151 as, as promoters and 96 as detractors. So that's a hard group to pick, but it's still doing a pretty good job on it. And for promoters here, it's mispredicted uh, promoters 17 times as detractors, 43 times as passives, but 923 times as accurately predicted them as a promoter. So the next question is, given that we've you know we've picked our model, we found a model, it's pretty accurate, we're happy with how it's uh, it's it's been built, it seems to make sense to us. How can we apply that to to some new data? Where we don't know the where we don't know the outcome, and this is known as uh, scoring. And to do that, we can we can open up a another stream, which is what we'll do now. We'll click on uh, opening the scoring passive stream and try and apply one of these models to make a prediction against guests where we don't know what category they belong to within the recommendation scale.